Hello, riders, and welcome back to the channel. GP, the arch nemesis of the coaster enthusiast. Just because I don't know as much about a niche subject. Only recently, I made the conversion from a GP to an enthusiast, somewhere along the lines of about a year ago, when quarantine started. Recently, I had a loyal fan reach out to me, sending me a very, very nice note, along with a great video idea. That video idea was to review their minimal, crappy GP creds. So that's what I'll be doing. Today, I'll be giving you guys my- their top 10 coasters that this loyal viewer sent to me. If I do get something wrong, please correct me in the comments. Enjoy your ride! Okay, before we get started, I would like to state that I possibly got into roller coasters at the very worst time. Over quarantine, I got really interested in coasters, but the thing about quarantine is, I couldn't go anywhere. So I watched, and researched, and quizzed myself, and ultimately ended up here, making YouTube videos that nobody watches. Yet, straight up, I have 29 credits. Keep in mind, I have never been to a park with an enthusiast mindset yet, so you might see parks on this list with amazing rides that I chickened out on. So that's why you won't see rides like El Toro on this list. Stupid, scared GP. This summer, I plan on hitting up parks in my area, adding over 30 credits or so this year alone. On my list of 29, there are 7 different parks in 3 different states, and a whole lot of regret and missed opportunities. Let's get started with the honorable mentions. Skull Mountain at Six Flags Great Adventure. This ride is pretty good. It's a great first drop, and then an okay rest of the ride. Had a ride in 2018 where a party behind was screaming Rick Astley the entire time. Weird. Traveling Pretzel Dark Ride at a Traveling Fair I rode this ride at a little county fair, and let me tell you, this thing whips. Just imagine Devil's Den, but the hairpin turns feel like a car crash. Number 10, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Walt Disney World. Ah yes, the GP has been to Disney World, surprise surprise. This is showing you the quality of these coasters on this list. Not saying that Big Thunder Mountain is bad, but it really isn't the most thrilling coaster out there. To be fair, it does exactly what it needs to do, and that's deliver a somewhat exciting experience to a park that has an overwhelming majority of families. The theming is impeccable compared to a lot of the other rides on this list, with interactive and unique elements and highly themed near misses. There isn't much force in this ride and barely any airtime beyond the drop, but still a great ride for what it is. Number 9, Green Lantern First Flight at Six Flags Great Adventure. Six Flags Great Adventure is one of the seven parks my GP self had been to, and I remember this ride vividly. Specifically, how uncomfortable and boring the ride is. For the uneducated, this was formerly Chang at Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom, but was relocated to Great Adventure as Green Lantern First Flight in 2011. And yeah, should've stayed over there, they could've used it so much more than us. For my rides in 2019, I remember it not being too noticeably rough, but oh my god, was it uncomfortable. This is a B&M stand-up coaster, so the restraints have you in a standing-up position. This involves an over-the-shoulder restraint, and what I'd like to dub the crotch rock. This sits right between your legs, and if you catch it weird on the mostly okay Asian versions and the okay drop, it's a world of pain I didn't even know you could feel on a roller coaster. But still, overall, it was pretty okay, with decent versions. I'm praying for this ride to get the floorless treatment, as I would probably enjoy this ride way more. Although, there is a floorless in the park already with Bizarro, uh, oh well. Number 8, Oscar's Wacky Taxi at Sesame Place. Oh my god, you will not find a bigger Wacky Taxi fan than me. Oh my god, this ride was so good, it was unexpected, but like there's airtime and forces, but it's so short, oh my god. Seriously though. This ride is jam-packed with good elements. It's just so, so short, only about 30 seconds long. It isn't much of a problem though, as the line never beyond 10 to 15 minutes, so you can always hop right back in in a jiffy. There are two great ejector moments on this ride, and it was the first ride I really marathoned with friends. Overall, it's just so good. Number 7, Expedition Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Okay, hear me out. I'm a sucker for theming. This ride is a banger attraction, and going through some of these elements in the dark is a really, really fun experience. Unfortunately, a lot of the outdoor sections aren't the most thrilling, 
as they kind of meander through the layout, but that's just my opinion. Now to the theming. Disney theming is always next level stuff. This coaster is themed to the mythical Yeti, and the queue is the base camp of Mount Everest, which is so interesting to look at and find the small knickknacks and papers to add to the story and experience. But the theming on ride isn't my favorite. The two moments I'm talking about are the iconic ripped up track scene and the projection screen. These kill the pacing for me, even though the ride doesn't truly start until the first show scene. But that's a minor gripe for a great ride. Number 6, Batman the Ride at Six Flags Great Adventure. Heading back to Great Adventure, we're talking about Batman. The original invert, well, the original invert's cousin. This ride is honestly underrated, being dubbed the least of the inverts. While that may be true, it doesn't mean that's bad by any means. It's just, you know, it's there in the invert club. This ride's drop is great, and a lot of forces are persistent throughout the ride. A lot of the inversions, I feel, are fairly intense. Nothing insane, but you'll still feel it. It's that consistency that I love, and you'll see that shine throughout the rest of this list. But Batman isn't terrible. Number 5, Twister at Knobles. Twister at Knobles is a slept-on ride. Probably because it's at the same park as that thing. But make no mistake, this ride keeps true to its name. This ride is like the Boardwalk Bullet at the Kimo Boardwalk, in the sense that it weaves in and out of its structure. A lot. This ride is dang good, with ridiculous pacing and crazy headchopper moments. The reason it's at number 5 though, is because there is little, if any, airtime. That really isn't the most important thing for this ride, as its strengths really outweigh its weaknesses, with crazy speed and high forces. Number 4, Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Great Adventure. Great Adventure, hello again. Heading about 100 feet from Green Lantern is Superman Ultimate Flight, the B&M flying coaster. This park really has it out for B&M, don't they? <laughs> Yikes. This coaster is really fun, with the flying position being really unique to the park. It may be one of the least loved flyers, but it's still pretty good. This ride stays fun throughout the entire time, and the pretzel loop is probably the most intensive version I've experienced so far, contributing to its number 4 spot. Number 3, Space Mountain Omega at Walt Disney World. Space Mountain is the best roller coaster at the Walt Disney World Resort. This ride is so loud and unpredictable, and really is, and always will be, an unexpected ride. This ride is famous for its exterior, but it's what on the inside that matters. This ride is quite a bit of just random ejector moments, nothing serious, but it's still completely unexpected being in the dark. This coupled with the loud noises and it's just sensory overload, and it's real fun taking the number 3 spot on this list. Number 2, Comment at Hershey Park. Oh my god! This ride represents two things. A great PTC Woody, and the missed opportunities here. In 2018, I took a trip down to Hershey Park, and my GP chicken self went to the zoo. The zoo. I mean, I'm not complaining, I did see Cool Bald Eagle, but that's beside the point. Intamin was right there! Anyway, that what do you see while you're watching Skyrush POV is this comment. My GP self went on that, and it's pretty good. I got a ride at sunset, so the ride was pretty warmed up and some of the airtime was pretty great. There's a series of camelbacks that are taking close to the end of the ride, and each one gave me a quick pop of ejector. This ride also features two drops, which are both really really fun, albeit short. The ride is also the oldest on the list, opening up in 1946 but still holds up. <sighs> number 1, Phoenix at Knobles. The number 1 on this list is Phoenix, and boy is it a good number 1. This ride is THE certified best wooden coaster, and packs a punch. I remember my first rides when I was in the 3rd grade. The buzz bars were not adequate restraints at all, and my older cousin had to ultimately hold me down the entire ride. That's how much ejector there was. You're barely in your seat the entire time. This thing flings you. And it has one of my favorite qualities in a ride. A consistently thrilling ride that doesn't relent. The entire ride is filled with insane ejector moments. It's a long one at that. Overall, it's my favorite coaster I've- <coughs> It's this loyal fan's favorite coaster of all time. 